we choose to go to the moon in this decade and do the other thing, not because they are easy, but because they are hard. That's one small step for man, one giant leap for mankind. My name is Paul Gleiser and I'm a native of Dallas and a big fan of the Apollo lunar landing missions. As such, I've often wondered what would have happened to the Man on the Moon project if it had been raining in Dallas on November 22, 1963. On that awful day, if rain had kept the top on President Kennedy's limousine, we may not have gone to the moon. because Kennedy likely would not have been killed. And the biggest remaining reason for going to the moon, honoring the memory of a fallen president, would not have existed. The exploration of space will go ahead, whether we join in it or not. And it is one of the great adventures of all time. When Kennedy took office, America was still spooked by the fact that the Soviet Union had a real jump on us in space. The Soviets had orbited the first man-made satellite, Sputnik, in 1957. It didn't do much except beep, but that was more than we could do. The Russians had the mighty Vostok rocket by the time Kennedy took office. We had rockets that didn't work very well. We and the Soviets were working feverishly to put a man in space. Again, the Russians beat us. On April 12, 1961, cosmonaut Yuri Gagarin made one orbit of the Earth and landed safely near a farmer's field in the Ukraine. About three weeks later, on May 5th, America answered as best it could. Uh, all right, uh, lift off and the clock is started. Astronaut Alan Shepard rode a Mercury spacecraft perched atop a tiny redstone missile. His flight reached an altitude of 116 miles and ended 300 miles downrange in the Atlantic Ocean. It took about 15 minutes. It wasn't an orbit of the Earth, but it was spaceflight. That was good enough for Kennedy, and he made a decision. 20 days after Shepard's flight, Kennedy spoke to a joint session of Congress. It's one of his best remembered speeches. These are extraordinary times, and we face an extraordinary challenge. Our strength as well as our convictions have imposed upon this nation the role of leader in freedom's cause. Now it is time to take longer strides, time for a great new American enterprise, time for this nation to take a clearly leading role in space achievement, which in many ways may hold the key to our future on Earth. I believe that this nation should commit itself to achieving the goal before this decade is out of landing a man on the moon and returning him safely to the Earth. No single space project in this period will be more impressive to mankind or more important for the long-range exploration of space. And none will be so difficult or expensive to accomplish. Kennedy kept pressing his case in a speech at Rice University in Houston on September 12, 1962. But why some say the moon? Why choose this as our goal? And they may well ask, why climb the highest mountain? Why 35 years ago fly the Atlantic? Why does Rice play Texas? We choose to go to the moon. We choose to go to the moon. We choose to go to the moon in this decade and do the other thing, not because they are easy, but because they are hard. Because that goal will serve to organize and measure the best of our energies and skills. Kennedy would live to see the six-man flights of Project Mercury, ending with Gordon Cooper's 34-hour orbital mission that marked the last time any American has gone into space alone. By the start of the Gemini program and the real work of getting to the moon, that beautiful sunny November day in Dallas would intervene, and Kennedy would be gone. But I will always believe that Kennedy's terrible death got us to the moon. 
By 1969, fear of Russian space dominance had faded, but the desire to honor Kennedy's commitment had not. For Trinity Mother Francis Health System and Hibbs Hallmark & Company Insurance, I'm Paul Gleiser.